Hello, my name is John. Actually, my given name is Janis Vikmanis, but that is hardly pronounceable, and uh, people come to think of a female in case of not seeing me. Though, I was born both of the times in Sweden, first time by my parents, and uh, second time by God. I experienced the new birth in Jesus Christ. Uh, the reason was quite interesting for many people to know, perhaps. Um, my parents, they were refugees from the Baltic states. During World War II, they escaped. Mom came to Gotland, 1944. My father, he came to Germany, 1944. Also, he remained there until 1948. Then he came to Sweden. So I was born 1960 in uh, the town where I live today. Westeros, Vasteros, you can find it on the map, 100 kilometers westward of Stockholm, it's one car, uh, one hour's car journey. Uh, we didn't speak Swedish at home, though I spoke Swedish when I came out the door, with my playmates and uh, my classmates. Uh, we spoke Latvian, it's a small tiny language spoken about uh, from 1.5 million people speak it average day and 2.5 million would understand Latvian being spoken. It isn't similar to anything. It's like um, English is related to f further away than uh, perhaps Italian or further away. Living in Latvia, having neighbors, Estonians, Russians and Lithuanians would be like uh, living in, in, in England and having neighbors, Finns, uh, Italians, and Dutch people. So I would uh, perhaps understand a little Lithuanian. It's about 20% I would understand. I understand about 4% Russian or, or Polish or Czech or Slovak or Serbian, Croatian. That's very little. And um, almost non-Estonian, of course. I can read Estonian and they can read Latvian. But we understand nothing of each other. So I was grown up uh, in Sweden. And um, all the time, the first memories from my early life was the parables of Jesus, his uh, teaching, his life achievements. Uh, those were the brightest moments in life. And I was in school, public school, first grade, up to third, up to, I think it was, sixth grade, we had uh, Christianity as a subject in school and they read to us from the parables of Jesus and the stories in the Bible and those were the brightest moments. And actually those are the few things I remember from childhood. The other things were just grayish and dull. Um, I remember Ezekiel, I remember uh, these uh, Baal prophets, the stories in the, the Mount of Carmel, the Exodus, uh, the preaching on the mountain and the principles that he taught, the parables of the sower. But uh, uh, my parents, they told me a lot and grandparents told me a lot about World War II. So I'm grown up with the memories from the First World War there and the Second World War there. And uh, I played a lot as a child war because as a child you have to get rid of this horrible memory some kind of, some way. And uh, they oppressed, the communists in Latvia oppressed people hardly, severely. They had concentration camps all over the Soviet Union. 62 million people the communists slew from the time of Stalin, no, from the time of Lenin, and upward forward. Not the Nazis, they had time to slay 21 million people, and they would have done more if they would have time to. They did not, but they started World War II together with Russia, the communist Russia. So um, the losers were really the Russians more of than any, because there haven't been that many Baltic people as 62 million people. The Russians probably slew each other more than anything else. The Ukrainians, they made a whole more. Uh, seven million people, they starved to death, Stalin, the Belarusians, etc., etc. So, 
when you're grown up with all these kind of memories, this uh, can infuse tremendous fear into child. Uh, though I did what my parents told me to, I went to school, public school, I finished the school, I'd, I really didn't know why I lived. I uh, bounced down into a Christian bookstore, which was owned by Methodists, I think it was, in my own town, Westeros, and uh, there was an old man there, he was from Denmark, he spoke with Danish accent, and he uh, let me come and go as I wished, and was such a tremendous atmosphere there when they have had these Bible studies or their um, prayer meetings. So finally I asked, he let me just come and go, he didn't push me uh, any or anything, or try to tell me how things were. He let me come and ask, so I did. And I asked, how do you make this life become a reality? Because I can't find anything else than Jesus. And there is, if there is no God, there is no reason. And I'm not that clever that I can make a reason out of things which have no reason from the beginning. I could as well make a suicide. Um, but he explained to me, he said, no, you can't do it that way, the way you think. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to create you anew, so that you can become a new creature. And I said, no, because it, was, it felt so unjust. Because I tried to do what Jesus said, and that wasn't enough, enough. But then all of a sudden I said, of course, yes, I will, but not now. Because they came down the stairs, uh, uh, classmates, and they heard all this and it felt so stupid. So I took my car and drove that one around the corner. And we got the only skyscraper in the town. <laughs> and I said, Jesus, I've been speaking with you all my life as far as I can remember myself. Is this is the way? Yeah, I don't want to live anymore. I want you to take over my life. Create me a new, become my Lord. I said these words, I didn't feel anything that evening. Next morning on, it was all my loneliness was wiped away. I could for the first time ever sit and read books for a longer time. I could play my guitar. It was such a feeling of contentness that if I ever would need anything in life, that would be here and would never, ever leave me. And God began to speak. <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was tremendous, because how can a light be a speech? It was because he sorted up all the stupid things I did myself. I uh, was delayed to a lecture at the public school. I, my mom, she had ordered, arranged for me to go uh, become a medical aide or something. It, it was interesting, so I went. And there were grown-up people there. I was 19 years of age. But... I felt a little bit stupid because I was late. So I prayed, Jesus, forgive me. Help me. And all of a sudden I see that the teacher is half an hour delayed himself. God, was it you? Could have been. I did that once more with another teacher. And I said, Jesus, forgive me. Help me sort this one up, please. And the next teacher was delayed one quarter of an hour. So I began to ask God, what's about this? What's about that? And I received answers. Wait a little. Just now. Come. Uh, sorrow. Joy. Uh, I received very um, um, blunt answers, sort of. Uh, very uh, unintellectual. These are not the way we are speaking. These answers I received. Because God doesn't pretend. I will always be a child in his eyes. And he does not pretend. So I was curious, so I went around in lots of different kind of churches and wanted to get acquainted with this God. And I noticed they were mainly the same, all of them, well, except for the witnesses of Jehovah or Mormons. They, they were so different, they just, you know, could get even just with themselves. So I understood that God actually, he, um, he gives us different kind of clothes, uh, we can't put too much emphasis on the dressing, um, but um, of the contents and the Word of God. 
Uh, but the thing was, my grandpa he had been an officer in the World War II uh, on the German side because they thought they would receive back the deported people. They had three occupations in Latvia. The first one was by the communists, where they deported all the ones they could get hold of. And that was on behalf of the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact that Stalin um, uh, did with uh, Hitler. Uh, Hitler sent his uh, foreign minister, Ribbentrop, to Moscow and met there Molotov, and they signed a treaty that uh, Germany, uh, Nazi Germany would be allowed to occupy half of Poland, and that they in turn will give Soviet Union, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the other half of Poland, and Bessarabia, which would be Moldavia today. And so the World War II was started, and uh, Britain and France proclaimed war to Germany, and all on it went. Uh, in Finland, they didn't, couldn't enter. Uh, they entered Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland, and they deported all the ones they could get hold of and killed whom they could. So they hid my relatives because my grandfather's father, from the father's side, he was judge, a uh, civil judge, uh, and um, in the relatives we had officers also, so they hid. So um, when the Nazi Germans came, they seemed to be liberators. Of course, they kept everything that the communists had confiscated. And uh, when things went well for the De Germans and Nazis, they didn't uh, draft anyone. Uh, when things went worse, they falsely drafted the Estonians, Lith Latvians, Lithuanians, made, their made constructed the legions. That was the Latvian legion. But they were tricked. They were... It was a th huge perverted theater. People thought that they would um, fight for their own independence. And so also Grandpa. So he had seen World War II. Uh, they were kind of Christians. They uh, believed in the things that Jesus spoke about, but not too close. And uh, the day I received Jesus, it was like uh, putting the high beams on on the car at night was flashing in the eyes of my parents and my close relatives. They couldn't understand what I have done. I just couldn't retell them really either because they were Christians already, they thought. Some of them were, I found actually. My father was. But in life, all the things that disturb you just come in and take over. So... Uh, I just could live as a Christian for them. I couldn't speak about it really. I couldn't tell them who Jesus was because they knew it all too well. Uh, better than I, kind of, they thought. But, well, head knowledge wasn't their new birth. So, um, it was time for me to make the military duty. We had a draft then in Sweden, 1970, no, 1980, 79, 80. And it was time to meet for me to make this, but Jesus said, I should love my enemies. And uh, Jesus says this one to all of his followers, and I told Grandpa this, and I said, Jesus said, and I intend to do what he says. Grandpa became very cross, and he, um, um, but my father, he explained it to him that, look, listen, this has to do with conviction. You can't command any conviction into anybody. So uh, he convinced my pa, uh, my pa convinced my grandpa, so they accepted me, and I remained with them. Uh, and I was allowed to make uh, military duty without arms. I did that for 11 months in Uppsala by the operation tables as a medical aid. And uh, I met a, a student there that was supposed to become a doctor, physician, and he invited me to the Baptist uh, church, and I came, and I remained with them, because they had fellowship with this Jesus. And uh, I um, received also the word of God, and was supposed to read it 